Example three, 100 milliliters of a 0 0.050 molar NH3 solution is titrated with a 0 0.15 molar HCl solution. So we have 100 milliliters of this 0.05 molar ammonia solution sitting in a beaker, and we have this 0.15 molar hydrochloric acid sitting in a long burette on top of the beaker, and we're gonna be opening the stopcock and titrating it. We're gonna be dropping acid into this base solution to you know, find out whatever it is that we need to find out, which we'll find out in a second. So after 10.0 milliliters of HCl solution is added, what is the pH? What is the pH of the final solution? Okay, so we have a weak base solution sitting in a beaker. We have the hydrochloric acid on top of it, and we're getting ready to add the hydrochloric acid. I add 10 mils of this particular acid, which is 0.15 molar. Where does my pH end up? Okay, same thing. Major species, stoichiometry, equilibrium. So, uh, you know what? Let me do this in blue. I, I like actually changing colors here. Ah, uh, nose is itching. Okay, so major species. Upon addition of H plus before reaction, I need to decide what's happening. I have NH3, I have H2O, I've added HCl, which is a strong acid, it's going to fully dissociate, so I have free protons and free chloride ion floating around. What reaction is going to dominate? What's going to dominate is this reaction right here. What's going to happen is NH3 is going to react with the H plus and it's going to form ammonium NH4 plus plus what else? That's it. That's it. That's the reaction that's going to take place. Okay. So we have a before, we have a change, and we have an after. This is stoichiometry, so we're working in moles. NH3, we have 100 milliliters times 0 0.05 molar. That means we have 5.0 millimoles of ammonia floating around. We added, so let me circle that. We added 10 milliliters of a 0.15. So 10 milliliters, I hope you'll forgive me, I'm skipping the decimals, but you know you should keep track of the decimals if, if you have a teacher that actually cares about significant figures. 10 milliliters times 0 0.15 moles per liter molarity gives me, and millimoles, milliliter, I get 1.5 millimoles. Well, five millimoles, 1.5 millimoles, these are gonna react. This is the limiting reactant. So this is going to go away, minus 1.5 millimoles. That's the change there. We're gonna end up with an after of zero millimoles of H plus. This is going to be minus 1.5 millimole. That's going to give us 3.5 millimoles of that. And then this is going to be, this, the beginning is zero. We're going to add 1.5 millimole because as this depletes, that same amount shows up. So we get 1.5 millimoles of NH4+. Plus. Okay, so now species after the reaction. Well, we have NH3, we have NH4+, plus. We have the Cl minus, that doesn't do anything, and we have H2O. What's going to dominate the equilibrium? This is going to dominate the equilibrium. Okay, here's where it gets really, really interesting. Um, as it turns out, I have a choice here. I can use one of two reactions. I can use this one. I can use the 
NH3 plus H2O is in equilibrium with NH4 plus plus OH minus. If I do that, I have to use the KB because this is, by definition, a base association reaction. A weak base reacts with water, pulls off the proton from water, forms the ammonium ion, and releases a hydroxide ion into solution. Or I can use the acid version of this. I can do NH4 plus, it gives up dissociate. The acid dissociation is, because this is just an acid, this is the conjugate base. This is a base. This is the conjugate acid. Acid base. It just depends on a perspective. It's like, you know, heads or tails. It's the same coin. H plus plus NH3. If I use this equilibrium for this problem, I have to use the Ka. That's the only difference. This is a base association reaction. I need the Kb. This is a acid dissociation reaction. I have to use the Ka. Well, the relationship between these two is you remember, Ka times Kb equals Kw, which is equal to 10 to the negative 14, always. So if you're given a Ka, you can find Kb. In this case, if you're given a Kb, you can find Ka. Well, what to choose, what to choose. I think I'm just going to go ahead and because this is a weak base, I'm going to go ahead and use the base equilibrium. I'm going to use that one just to keep things consistent. So let's go ahead and write. NH3 plus H2O is in equilibrium with NH4 plus plus OH minus. We have an initial, we have a change, we have an equilibrium. Well, this is an equilibrium part, so we have to deal in molarity. Well, the NH3, we said we had 3.5 millimoles left over in solution after reaction. Now we had 100 liters, we've added 10 milliliters to it. Sorry, 100 milliliters, we've added 10. So the total volume is now 110 milliliters. So we have 0 0.0318. Water doesn't matter. The NH4 is 1.15. I'm sorry, not 1.15, that was the previous problem. 1.5 millimoles floating around in 110 milliliters. That's equal to 0 0.0136. There's no hydroxide left. This is going to diminish a little bit. Water doesn't matter. This is going to show up. This is going to show up. We end up with 0 0.0318 minus x. Water doesn't matter. 0 0.0136 plus x and x. And now Kb Kb, which equals, in the case of ammonia, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, is equal to this times this divided by that. It equals x times 0 0.0136 plus x divided by 0 0.0318 minus x. I hope that you guys are getting sick of seeing this over and over again. That's a good sign. Like I said last time, when you're sick of seeing a problem over and over again, that means you completely understand it. That's where you want to be. You want to be sick of these problems. Okay, equals x times 0 0.0136 divided by 0 0.0318 x, which in this case is the hydroxide ion concentration. Keep track of the species that you're dealing with. Don't lose your way. It equals 4.2 times 10 to the negative 5. When we take the negative log of that, we get a pOH of 4.38, which implies that the pH is 14 minus that. You get 9.62. That's it. Very, very nice. Okay.